back here with Bill O'Reilly. Um, so before we went on the break, uh, you were talking about this this call. We need a all-out war yes. on the Islamic State. What what does that mean? It means that uh, Congress should pass a declaration of war mm -hmm. against uh, Islamic terrorist groups. All right, and then that's you, a you that's name that's them. a large well, you name them Al Qaeda, um, ISIS, and there are four or five. Are others. we not at war with Al Qaeda right now? We are, Doesn't but we're the not officially. Authorization for the use of military force kind of cover anything we want to do. Against yeah, the them? president has the authority to do it, but if you make a, a declaration of war. It does a number of things. Number one, it gives your authorities inside the United States far more latitude to d detain an Omar Mateen. Okay, far more latitude. You could detain. You, you could, could detain. You could detain an American under citizen. A number of, if you're at war, mm -hmm. on a number of different things, you can detain people. FDR mm -hmm. did it with the Japanese. Now I think he made a mistake, mm -hmm. but he did it. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so the the war declaration takes the uh, protection of your audience and you and me away from law enforcement and puts it into the military precincts. Number two, NATO would then be mobilized and they would have to join in the fight against these jihadist groups after by, by treaty. After 9-11, this is the lo largest loss of life in an attack in the United States after 9-11. After 9-11, we went to war in Iraq. Mistake. We treat, treated it as a military and that was a mistake. effect. So why is this not a mistake to because treat we this wouldn't as a be military an event? We wouldn't be an occupier here. This, this is a war of attrition against a terror group. That's the same philosophy as the Nazis. It's, just, it's the Third Reich. It's the same. There's no. The but reason, how does that stop, uh, like a, a, a lone gunman here in the United States? Doesn't. I told this you, you can't stop. You that. can't stop it. You so why are we it. going? Why would we then declare war based on this? Because then, rather than outsourcing the fight against ISIS to the Kurds, mm -hmm. NATO would do it. Mm -hmm. And NATO would then destroy command and control mm -hmm. of ISIS, all right, and Al Qaeda, destroy it. Mm -hmm. So there'd be, right now, guys like Mateen think ISIS is winning because they're on the internet and ISIS is telling them they're winning and mm -hmm. ISIS is causing all kinds of trouble. Once the world sees that these people are being annihilated, and I mean annihilated, mm -hmm. all right, that whole propaganda, we're winning the jihad, the caliphate, we're going to get this established, vanishes, all right? Does, does, it plus, necessarily does it necessarily vanish or, because in, in the Muslim world, it is n nearly proverbial now that what, regardless what happens to enemies, declared enemies in the United States, they are given pretty good press that they are surviving or they're thriving. Right. And the, 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 the street in, in the Muslim countries don't find out. Television and television and internet is internet. And the pictures tell the story. Um, and then the other reason about declaring war is to protect the refugees, the hundreds of thousands of refugees who are now storming into Europe mm -hmm. and women and children drowning in the Mediterranean Sea. Once you declare war and you move in serious NATO troops, you can protect those people. And do you have to hold that land? No. No one has to hold that you land? Don't but to, it, you don't if, have to hold the land for an any air conceivable... War. You're, not, you're not trying to bring democracy to Syria. You're trying to annihilate an enemy that needs to be annihilated. And then who takes over once you... Hey, that's... Leave? You know, you work with whoever you feel is trustworthy in the country, but we cannot dictate how these countries run themselves, particularly in a Muslim world, mm -hmm. because that value system is way different from our values. And when is the war over? The war is over when the level of terrorism goes down, the refugees can return home, and you have a basic handle on the situation. Look, we know what the danger is, mm -hmm. we know what the cost is, and we know it's been going on far too long. Mm -hmm. So now it's time for America to step up its power and take care of these SOBs. Mm -hmm. we, do, we do have a go. I, gotta, I want to ask you just a couple more questions. Let's see what, let's see what we can uh, agree on here. Uh, what do you think of Donald Trump's response so far? Well, it's a political response. It seems fairly self-congratulatory. Yes, it is. He's a politician. He shouldn't shock you. Mm -hmm. Trump has two things. There the are other politicians who would not say... Uh, I appreciate the congrats, or I called it. I mean, that's not political behavior. That's grandstanding. Okay. He wants to be president. He's using this terrorism issue, mm -hmm. all right, to bolster his popularity. So he's making a that's political tool out of a terror attack. That's what he's doing. Okay. All Is right. Hillary doing the same thing? 
I don't know. I, I, I had Trump on tonight on the fact, and I, we were close to getting Hillary Clinton on. I hope she'll come on later in the week. But she's had a statement put out. She said she some things. Do you think that she's doing the same thing? Look, here's the difference. Trump is, is bringing a robust, I'm going to get these guys attitude to the table. That's what he's bringing. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Clinton is bringing a more nuanced situation. Mm -hmm. Trump is betting that the country now wants a real avenger. Mm -hmm. That's what he's betting. All right? Mrs. Clinton is very tied into the Obama legacy right now because she needs him to, t to campaign. So it's, she might also it's an believe in it. It's she political advantage, it. if this is what we're talking about, yeah. to Trump on this one. Mm -hmm. All right? He has the advantage on this one. And if he wants to be president, so he's going to use it. That is um, true. Thank you. That is true. <laughs> okay, so let's try to agree on something. Uh, are guns a problem here? Guns are a problem in the hands of criminals and terrorists, but they afford the population a level of self-protection, which is why the founders put it into the Constitution. Okay. All right. Is, Let is me make, ISIS, can is, I make one more point? Oh, but we won't I know, talk I know. about anything else if Look, you do that. Legends and Lies, which is originally what I came on to talk about. Oh, I know. I've got the book right here, right. and it's a series on Sunday nights, and it's fantastic. Right, right. Legends and Lies, Bill O'Reilly. The reason that we beat these British oppressors is because everybody had a gun. Everybody. And all these redcoats were running around, and bang! That's what self-protection brings. <laughs> all right? That's I just why don't think our situation is comparable it's to Lexington comparable, and Concord. But you have to understand the history and emotion tied into the Second Amendment. You have to understand, well, I understand that it's the, there's essentially a there for self-protection by law-abiding people. That's why it's there. A, and it's not going to be overturned. A no well-regulated militia like being necessary to the security of a free state. Whatever. The of the sentence. It's not going to be overturned. <laughs> you got to deal with it. I don't think it's going to be overturned. Right. But, but that gun, means the no, no limits. Let, let's, let's not Obama, litigate that. Punish Please. the people who abuse Kay. the guns. Okay, fine. Punish them. But I also restrict some guns. You say it's possible. Yes. It's possible. So guns, ISIS, you say if we destroy ISIS, this this kind of problem will never end, but what? It will go down significantly okay. if you cut the head off the snake. It, but isn't isn't not a physical thing the problem, but the idea of jihad against the United States I the mean, problem? I mean, ideas. Look, how do you kill an idea? How do you kill an idea? You don't. There are still Nazis running around. There are still communists running around wanting to dominate. You don't. What you do is you take the playing field and destroy the people who are destroying your people. This is war. Accept it. Will you think of this? Do you see this as a hate crime that he chose a gay club? Everything ISIS does is a hate crime. But this man the was whole motivated. day. He's not. He's not a member of ISIS. He's not a member of ISIS. He was. He, he used the ISIS ideology to justify him killing gays because mm -hmm. ISIS wants to kill gays. And what Just about like a, Hitler wanted to kill gays. And lastly, same thing. Do you think this is a mental health problem at all? No. Because this person, no. his wife said he had a history of domestic abuse, he was bipolar and on steroids. Okay. Look, that's an excuse. No, this she's guy not excusing him. Look, she got away from him. This guy is evil. No, what I, I mean will by accept that. Is, I will accept that evil, evil exists. Evil. He's evil. I will and accept so is that the ISIS evil exists. Movement. What is the proper response to evil? Destroy it. Confront it. You don't you contain evil because you can't. You destroy evil. Mm -hmm. And ISIS is evil. This Matane is evil. He's dead. Mm -hmm. Now we have to get the rest of them. If you contain evil, can it destroy itself? No. I mean, unless you're Plato. I mean, come on. This is, <laughs> uh, this is life and death here, you know? I, I don't want to see any more dead Americans in the streets. We have to put the fear of God in these people, and we have to do it soon. Bill, thank you so much right. for being here. <laughs> Bill O'Reilly's series Legends and Lies, The Patriots, airs Sundays on the Fox News Channel. Bill O'Reilly, everybody.